So Max Pierre, please come to the stage. So we will need to time box this one a little bit. So only investors can make can make questions. I will I, I bet that many of you will become one. So uh, questions from these two guys. Uh, Pierre, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm bad with names, so I <laughs> forget it <laughs> easily. Uh, anyway, you said at some point that, that you use machine learning for filling out the missing values, essentially, right? Uh, okay, I don't know if you're aware, there's a, my colleagues from Essen, uh, Florentil and Michal Narayewski, have developed an R package for exactly the same purpose. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if they're using machine learning there, but uh, some some also probably using models for for missing those. Th that I can send you a link later on. This is something exactly what you're talking about. So, so if you in in time series data from electricity markets where you have uh, seasonality and so on, uh, that they try to well work around these these things. So this is something that it's more a note than a question I really. Can see you and ask the <laughs> All right. The more questions? Okay. Um, I have a question for Max. Um, I think your research is very interesting. It's exactly what I do as well. Um, and um, in terms of for energy prediction, usually you would make predictions which is deviated from, the result would be very much deviated from what the actual saving is, um, depending on your input parameters and depending on you know the actual household or offices that you're monitoring. So there are so many like variances influencing the, the prediction results. And when you put that into the pay-as-you-go model, how would you ensure that it's going to sustain in because uh, due to that gap between um, your prediction and the actual derived uh, actual results? Yeah, so I think the, the main thing that helps us is that we're making prediction at the daily level, but in the end, the, the bill, the invoice is made at the season level. Uh, and, uh, and the savings, they grow as N, and the errors as square root of N, so at some point, the, uh, the, so when we aggregate all of this, actually the error gets pretty small. But it's true, if, if we make a 1% saving and we have 10% inaccuracy, then uh, it's, not the right, uh, it's not the right model. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I wonder, like, what, do you apply that to residential buildings, or do you apply that to all kinds of buildings? Uh, all kinds. But c currently, we have mainly residential and uh, and some commercial. Uh, for some very specific use case, and I would say f maybe for the, for a commercial mall or something, uh, that would not be really um, really useful because we would need to have so many other features like affluence would be very, very important. But that could be integrated as well. We just don't have this data for now. <laughs> yeah, and I see that you're currently um, using the energy consumption, like smart metering kind of data, uh, energy consumption data. Would you say that your work would also benefit um, from, because installation of smart meter require like large scale, um, uh, large scale in installation essentially, and not every household to have that. But currently, uh, we have a project looking at how satellite could look at global uh, building energy efficiency um, by, you know, gaining pictures of like usually it's city by city. Where you can, you can have a look at whole country, and would you think that that could be very useful for as input for your project? Yes, but in our case, we need to, to, to control the local heating system. And this is actually much more challenging than getting the, the um, uh, consumption data. So anywhere we have to be on site, have some, some pieces of equipment that talk to the different uh, pieces of equipment of the, of the heating system. So then adding a meters in that is, is, not, uh, is not the most challenging thing we face. Um, but then if, yeah, if you, if, I mean, we could refine this, this, uh, this assumption also with uh, uh, with other uh, this model with other data uh, inputs but actually what we would be willing actually more interested to do is to to refine the optimization algorithm with the uh, with other um, inputs because here we have to be much finer right it's not daily data that we look at yeah, yeah. thank you okay great thanks can you pass the mic behind you thank you hello uh, i also have a question to this energy efficiency and so on uh, so when you 
uh, to this baseline forecasting? Uh, were you impacted by these changes of COVID, uh, people working at home, so then you have less people in the offices, more in the residential? Uh, no, no, not really. And this is because well, the, the climate is actually really the, 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 um, the strongest um, future of all. But this, and this would be true uh, for some offices. We didn't really uh, uh, see that. Um, but but it could be true actually yes that uh, that especially this, this is the thing I was talking about uh, a mall that is closed for three months because of COVID of course they will have very different uh, heating patterns um, but in our case it was really the climate that was having the strongest impact so we didn't see uh, too much of that yeah okay and thanks. it was not so much affected by COVID so far <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So we have two questions here, and then we will stop the session. Sorry. Okay. Question for Max. Yeah. Uh, do <laughs> customers have a hard time like trusting your model? Because this seems like you have a big temptation to make the models biased. Uh, we, do, do we really? Uh, uh, yes, and that's the point. We need to make it very, very transparent, actually. And this is why we actually rely on some version of uh, of linear regression and not something super, super weird. Because, um, and, and and we could not even rely on Shapley value to just say, see, this is this feature is impacting. No, we have to say you do this times that times this, and you end up with the computation we have. Um, so yeah, this is the this is basically the the the, the way we provide it. And I think it will be a bit challenging uh, this year because prices of energy goes up. And here they will see an increase in the charges, even though it would have been worse if we had not optimized it. Uh, so I'm, I'm preparing myself to do a lot of explanation now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. I hope it's for him now. <laughs> uh, I have a question for both of you. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so in maybe it was a, a bad day for Switzerland, but in the electricity map, there was a lot of unknown. Um, could you maybe explain how your uh, how so much can be unknown in in a given hour? Um, that depends on the the zone you're looking at. So we rely exclusively on publicly available data, and in the case of, Swi of Switzerland, it's just that uh, if I'm not mistaken, because I don't know like by heart all the <laughs> data sources. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's just that the transmission system operator uh, does not split out completely some sort of production modes. So we prefer uh, classifying it as a known instead of putting it into like uh, the wrong label and saying it's only hydro, even though we know there would be like some maybe some uh, gas in there. So you don't give th those unknown energy sources uh, carbon intensity? Uh, we do. You do? Okay. We do. And we have a, like a default value, but in the case of Switzerland, it would not be the same because we know like on an aggregate level over a year, we know that the, the composition of unknown would be maybe 60% hydro, 20% gas, and so on. So we can use the emission factors for all of these sources to, to make uh, that emissions fa factor specific for uh, the unknown in Switzerland. Thank you. And maybe a last question for Max. Uh, this pay-as-you-save business model, uh, as you mentioned, the prices have been increasing now, and maybe could you speak a little bit about the long-term, uh, long-term trajectory of a pay-as-you-save business model, as in if the building owners are used to your optimization for a very long time, if they can still even uh, trust that their energy demand would be as high as you predict. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't really know. I hope so. Uh, but but honestly, so we signed five years five years contract with this model, and that's basically a way so uh, to do two things. First is to take a risk ourselves and to show that we are confident in what we do, and uh, and that actually gives a bit of confidence to the to the clients, um, and uh, and we don't expect them to do big investments with no returns. Um, um, and actually, this is this is the the, the main purpose of uh, of all this, but also to have us being incentivized to save as much as possible, which is which is what we do. And honestly, I, I prefer spending a day on the optimization algorithm rather than the, than b like making a bias estimator of what this thing is doing. Uh, but probably that at some point, this is really important in a first in a first phase, and probably that at some point we will switch to some kind of subscription base because you know after five years everything will probably change. There will be some renovation work and things, and at some point. 
like we we would have shown them how much how much uh, how much was saved and i think uh, that's that's the direction it's taking yeah thank you